Okay, so now I'm for May 2024. Oh, again, so the moon now is in Gemini. So it's moved fast into Gemini. Um, let's have a look. Hi, guys. Uh, unpredictable weather conditions, possibly even hail. We've got bright sunshine here, so that's strange. I believe it's safe haven as well, though. I'm not sure. Helen of Troy, uh, the face that launched a thousand ships. Twelfth house of sacrifices, uh, prisoners. Virgo, which is today, ninth, and Moon. So, Moon in Gemini. So, Kristen had a good idea about when I go away. I'll do you a read for the eight days, and then if I manage to get anything, um, do anything while I'm away, I shall do that as a bonus. Um, so watch the community tab as well because I'll be maybe posting some pictures about where we are and what we're doing. There's a Gemini moon. So his card is a grandfather, your spirit guide, um, health issues, hospital doors, etc. Leg energy. There it is. In its own house, six house. Uh, So what's wrong with this picture then? Somebody hasn't made a choice yet or hasn't made the right choice. Gemini OG, like I said, Gemini Moon. Keeping things hidden, not communicating. Separations, feeling um, isolated. Um, children, schools. And number six are 24. It's today's card, so it's neutral, but it's worth knowing that it's negative. Negative communications and choices yeah judgment day has arrived and some people have um shackled themselves to the wrong um uh, fight so we've got the eagle again which is scorpio and aries it's spirit seeing the bigger picture it's something to do with the bible and john i can't remember now about the eagles um the number 20 there's a long-standing problem and it won't go away it needs to be sorted dental uh, issues, knees, bones, etc. And then we have my cat. So, um, this is not letting anything negative into your aura, be it financial, emotional, spiritual, mental, or physical. Um, not saying anything negative, nothing negative coming out your mouth. Don't let anybody come at you with drugs or needles. Um, be careful what goes in your mouth, what comes out of it. Today, that's not neutral, that's neutral. Today's card is the Hermit, and it's good because it's in the upright. So this is important, 6 and 24. Um, the snake, the people that are born in you, the snake, are a good influence. And somebody is walking beside you to light your way. But again, we've got yesterday's card, the 17, Aquarius, being haunted by past, the past. Something needs settling once and for all. Face the chaos head on and then there'll be hope, healing and freedom. 
the 17 and then Fred could be important we've got Chiron which is the minor arcana of the Virgo card so it's healing it's slow and steady wins the race it's gardening it's grounding it's agriculture it's those with the scar on the leg the limp or the amputation it's those that wore uniform or do wear uniforms so those with a darker complexion it's Manchester and the bees impatience well impatience getting you nowhere because you've got to go slow and steady and standing at the crossroads still so it's important this this decision what you've got to make and you're not willing to make it yet i don't know why uh, so spirit is with you because we've got the high priestess and we've got the hermit but um either your judgment is off or a judgment will go against you or there's a separation or a bad decision apologies are going to be needed um, issues with the ankles and legs um, could be important if you don't if you lose hope there'll be no healing or freedom so keep the hope alive yeah children definitely children grandmas um, child abuse issues from the past like I said someone from the past returning Injustice again, the number eight or 26 Libra energy sitting on the fence. You need to communicate, you need to communicate positively. Someone in uniform of a dark complexion, um, somebody immature, somebody who is um, the postman, maybe bringing you a parcel or a letter. There are those who see, those who see when they're shown, and those who will never see. and. Um, we need equal reciprocity children all over this and sitting on the fence so somebody's not making the right decisions maybe it is a child and there she is again so be careful what you say use your words carefully um coming out the gates of hell secrets being revealed um positivity all around don't let anything negative into your field Financially, emotionally, spiritually. So it's the carnival people again. Um, the travellers, the psychics, the mediums, the Romanies. Um, October the 11th, where I come from. And the 2 and 29. Someone who was once a good friend is now a dangerous enemy. The cuckoo in the nest, the Capricorn or the Capricorn cusper. So early Capricorn is Sagittarius. Late Capricorn is Aquarius. Uh, someone in uniform for dark complexion. That benefactor has now become someone who is um, causing problems. 19 is negative. So, so the sun, what we had yesterday. Um, you've been stuck somewhere because of others' actions. Um, delays in travel. 19. Um, kept in the dark. It's a nightmare situation but you can release yourself at any time that door is wide open you don't have to stay there sleepless nights nine sleepless nights so nine weeks of sleepless nights sorry well, that's not a short period is it so 19 and this one is negative the 8 or 26 but that 2 and 29 is still on our side. So we've got this spirit around our side, the leading us, the guiding us, the walking beside us. Yeah, somebody, the next Mercury retrograde possibly, somebody's emotionally, financially, spiritually, mentally or physically um, holding you to ransom or holding someone else to ransom, possibly the kids. You're in separation because of legal matters or because of an injustice. Heartache, sorrow, loss, separation. Um, heart issues or minor surgery. Um, so we've got two weeks and three weeks there. It just keeps dragging on. Coming off the fence is what you need to do. Um, ask for help if it's needed. It's important. And there she is again. Now this is, so th this is not... Um, this is very unusual. So we've got the high priestess three times. 
So one coming back from the gates of hell, no longer letting negativity in. Um, but it does mean that there are power struggles because somebody doesn't like this, that they're, they're rising. Um, there's a Leo energy, there's issues with the heart, the back, um, illness, back temper, impatience. 8 and 26, keeps coming. Uh, no homecoming. I'm getting really worried about travelling home now. Um, stop banging your head against a brick wall. It's not going to be worth it. You're wasting your time. Um, it's indefensible what this is, whatever this is. Oh, my God. Something you can't defend anymore. It's become too much of a heavy burden. Um, and you're impatient to reveal this secret. Just be careful what you say is all I'm saying. So, yeah, hi, Galaz. Letter H. Um, Helen, Helen of Troy, the first that launched a thousand ships. And hell, where they, where they, so somebody sending themselves to hell or has been to hell and back because of someone else. Not just once, there's three times and they've come back. So maybe it's someone that's um, had near-death experience more than once. Hi, guys, the workings of fate. So... The letter H, the word Hegelas, Hegel, and he, Hegel literally means hail or sleet, as hinted in the Anglo Saxon and Icelandic rune poem. The rune thus suggests cold winds and bad weather, since the ancient Norse people were great travellers, so the travellers, the Romanese, etc., especially by sea. Such weather conditions were not only disruptive, but very dangerous. Indeed, one of their poetic descriptions of the ocean was the cold grey widow maker. So we may have a widow here. Likewise, the appearance of Hagalaz foretells of blasts of disruption sweeping through our lives, and it's associated with potential misfortunes such as venomous snakes. But we know that those snakes are on our side. So, spirituality was sometimes known as a snake. That's why St. Francis. And he cast the snakes from Ireland. He was casting the pagans. Um, the first begins with chaos, which is that in the reverse that we're not facing. Um, and the order that is created from it. So that's what Hagalas is. Once you face the chaos, order will return. Um, Although it is intimately connected with the past, yes, because we've got six of cups. Um, the goddess is most closely associated with Hagalaz, is Herd, one of the three norns who wove the web of fate. Herd was no, thought to be the norn of the past, so the past, like I said, and the two Verdandi and Skuld, near the present and the future. Another more sinister goddess is also connected with this rune. She is Hell, or Hella, from the name we derive from the English word Hell, a hideous apparition, so she's two-faced. Hell was thought to be a moulding, mouldering corpse on one side and a beautiful woman on the left. This dreadful goddess was the ruler of the world of the dishonoured dead, the guardian of the roads and pastures ways, so uh, the crossroads, uh, between the worlds, and watchful Heimdall, also has an association with this rune, so the tower. Interestingly, in a runic astrology, Hagalas is said to represent Halloween. So October the 31st, Day of the Dead, which would explain why she is at the gateway. Um, this is the rune of the unknown, of frightening, of mysterious events, sudden disruptive things that are about to occur in your life, and it will be turned on its head for a while. Yeah, so the, the hermit does suggest that we have to t uh, walk away from everything we've ever known or believed to be true. You will have very little power to avert these happenings. So there's your power struggles. Um, which is like a cold arctic wind blowing through the and hard and confuse your senses. 
with swirling sleet. The meaning could be taken quite literally as disruption to travel plans due to inclement weather conditions, but it's more likely that it's an interpretation goes beyond the literal. It is fortunate that the cold winds of icy reality that are set to blur will soon yield to the softer breezes of spring. So hope is implicit in this meaning. Don't lose hope, which you've already done. Um, all that you have to do is sit out the storm, be patient and make sure that you wrap up warm. Hagalas is also considered to be the ruin of gamblers, especially those who take risks, since it is the ninth in the Elder, the number nine, well done, Falcock series. It has a correspondence with the number nine. Many room readers do not consider Hagalas to have inverted meanings. It's always a disruptive and uncomfortable influence. Um, but you, there is a danger of silly avoidable accidents in this case, so be alert, be aware of all your surroundings. The runes suggest that more forethought would be a very good idea. Take your time, don't rush, slow and steady wins the race, and think through every one of your moves very carefully. So I better pack some jumpers then, aren't I? Twelve houses, prisoners, martyrs, victims, um, prisoners of your mind or physical um, so it is Pisces, the feet and toes, prisons, institutions, the colour green, which is the heart chakra. A return, there's your return. Karma, family secrets coming out. Hidden enemies, which is your hidden enemies, once a good friend, now a dangerous enemy. And reconnection, confinement, reparations, so somebody trying to make good for what they've done. Sacrifice, surrender, institutions and the collective unconsciousness. So it doesn't matter what some people do, you should not let them back in your life. That's that's a given, okay? Uh, not Something shouldn't be forgotten. They should be forgiven. Um, if you're a very good person, some of the things I can't forgive. But um, there will be a lot of people right now backtracking, trying to um, undo what they said, undo what they did. But we remember. So, finances will take a hit. Yeah, the eighth house of endings and new beginnings. We're going through a transformation phase. So, Scorpio energy. 32. The fawn again, so the daughter or the younger female. <clears throat> so the day of the dead all over this, October the 31st. And number three, and number 32. That could be door numbers, 31, 32. Too many, sorry. The Sun Dancer, the number 32, that 32 must be important. Then we've got it twice. Resilience. So you have to have stamina, you have to finish what you started. Um, 32. Nine of Swords, the nightmare situation that we've got there. Nine weeks. From my rotting body flowers shall grow, and I am in them, and that is eternity. The name Edward and Munch could be important. This is where it all goes dark and becomes mysterious. The eighth house represents a long dark night before the light comes, the dark night of the soul. There is a new dawn on its way, but you will need to grapple with the darkness and the unknown a while longer. Traditionally, the eighth house is about sex, death, psychic powers, 
control and material things such as money and inheritance. But such things you will end up owning or at least partly. It is also represents a time of year when Halloween or Samhain takes place involving all that is dark, gothic, things associated with it. So Halloween is mentioned twice now, 31 and 32. When the eighth house card turns up in a spread, the meaning is clear in a period of great transformation and it will be chaos. No matter in question may seem like a life or death issue. It is not a time to be superficial. You may be evaluating your life choices. Yes, we are re-evaluating our life choices, revisiting them. Uh, and the need for change is great. Something that's been in your life for a very long time will crumble like the tower. It must be built back up, but in a different way. You will not be able to forge ahead without taking care of this matter. A certain change must be completed before you can move ahead. You need to settle this long-standing problem. This adjustment may feel uncomfortable and will not be an easy one. Sex and death are major issues. The beginning and the end. Um, there is a doorway that you should not pass through for some. Uh, or you cannot pass through. This does not mean that someone's going to die. That's unlikely. But it does may, may, it, it may mean that you end up dealing with things that have been passed on to you. Inheritance issues, deeds, trust, insurances, goods of the dead, alimony, child support and even taxes. The eighth house card also indicates what a partner earns. These are her resources and finances. It can also concern something passed down from parents and grandparents. These are assets required or acquired sorry, from a relationship. Psychic ability in all its forms is also one meaning behind this card. It suggests premonition, visions, and seeing into the past, present, and future. But even so, it indicates communications from spirit. It may be that your home or environment experiences a haunting, or you become involved in paranormal interests, such as ghosts and other types of spirit. Past life information is also filed away in the eighth house, surfacing as unexplained phobias or sudden attacks of anxiety. In any event, with this card, you are quite connected to the psychic realm. Health-wise, the 8th house card means long-term illness with an extended period of recovery for someone who is connected to you. The 8th house indicates where the elderly or the sick go to die or a place of healing where there is no cure. Jealousy, rivals, sabotage, stalking are also issues. However, there are more positive meaning to this house of sex and death. You may be experiencing penetrating insight, so aha moments, and you may go through a time of renewal, a time where you are given a second chance at life and it is made over and you become the builder. Darkness comes and the tower falls, but there is a much better one to replace it. Nine of Swords. So stop those sleepless nights, the ticker tape machine going round in your head. It's not going to help anybody. Number three, we know is the daughter, the child, the feminine child, the younger feminine energy. Um, no start, no finish. So as it ends, it begins. It's a welcome new beginning, a new way of thinking, a new way of being, a new way of seeing. Many worlds coexist within our own and many beings reside there waiting to help us if we ask. We must allow ourselves to be welcome new opportunities so get off that fence and ask for help and keep our minds open to new things even if it pushes our boundaries and our logic left brain thinking we must learn to apply the way of truly seeing when approaching anything new for us to fully allow growth at any level whether that be emotional spiritual or mental entering into anything new can be overwhelming stressful or even traumatic however the more we learn to understand things from a different point, viewpoint, or even just allow without understanding at all, the more we allow the change to happen. Change can happen whether we like it or not, but it's always had the same outcome. It shifts us to a different place, a different energy, where we have the opportunity to learn and grow. We cannot control what happens to us, but we can control our reactions to it. We either embrace it and accept it, or we resist. So which side are you on? The decision is always yours, but know this. Even when you do not know 
what is on the other side, there is always the possibility of it being a positive experience. So don't doubt your capabilities of navigating your way through. Be willing to accept change and new ways of being, learning and accepting. This is where the biggest opportunities are hidden. So number 32 again. So there's a reason for it. You may be age 32. I don't know. Door number 32. So your, your ally, the sun dancer, celebrates you and reminds you of the laws of success and praise. Anything you place your attention on will manifest in experience. So the laws are always perfect. Expect the best and praise it in advance. This will unleash the magic of mystical magnetic energy. So like the High Priestess says, nothing negative coming out of your mouth, written or spoken. Um, give thanks in advance for the grace and goodwill of the divine. Be willing to dance the victory dance as if your greatest dreams are realised. And watch how easily things begin to fall into place. Stay positive and leave the timing up to the divine. So be patient. All things are possible now. Dance the joy of being and celebrate your life in abundance today. Live in the now. Okay, so resilience, again, is the fire energy, the fire in the pit of your belly. It's your sexual organs. It's um, desires. Um, your red chakra, the base chakra. So resilience is the adaptability, the ability, sorry, to withstand the challenges that are going to be facing you, the difficulties which we all experience in our life's journey, the ability to have the experience and learn how to better manage these situations if we are presented with them again. So we've been through this before, we don't have to repeat it. It's the real art of resilience. Resilience empowers us to become confident and to trust and understand that we have the will and the knowledge to manage any circumstances. While embroiled in this situation, we find it hard to comprehend where our strength will come from. However, somehow we connect to an inner knowing. We understand that the wisdom gained from such circumstances will only add to the richness of our life journey. You do have the strength and the will and the stamina to see this through to the end, however painful it may be. You are reaching new limits within yourself, which you never thought you could survive. It's been such a hard time with very little reward to keep you motivated to continue the fight, but fight you must. The battle was unavoidable and you put up a good fight, but now it's time to walk away, heal yourself, lick your wounds uh, that you sustained. It's almost over and in a few more days there will be a re resolution to this issue. The key to this experience is to ensure you find the time to mend your broken spirit Soothe your battered soul, and once you begin to self-nurture, you will wonder what all the fuss was about in the first place. Never forget. So, thanks for listening. Speak soon. I know it was quicker than yesterday's, but I'm out as well, so speak soon. Bye-bye.